Good morning from beautiful Brisbane, Australia. How are you this morning? And welcome to Thursday. <laughs> welcome, Conscious Warriors. As you can see, I'm really trying to gather my mind and focus this morning on what I'm talking about and who's here, what we're doing, how has your day been, let me know how you are. If you have any questions, please feel welcome to ask them because what you need, what you ask helps other people all around the globe. Now this morning, we're going to talk about grief and the holiday season. And the reason why we are is because so many people, uh, and it used to include myself as well, are impacted by grief throughout the holiday season. Now, some of our loved ones either depart in December or January, and after they do, it then makes the holiday season really challenging for us because the holiday season is about family and friends and coming together and giving thanks for all the good things in our life. Sometimes it's for families to come together that uh, spend <laughs> a lot of time apart throughout the year due to uh, distance. And I know for me, it was really hard when my mum passed away and it took me 17 years to get over the grief of losing my mum. Now, if I'd known the information I'm about to share today, it would have made those 17 years a lot easier to process and it's not about being time effective, all right? So I don't want you to think, oh, you know, 17 years, um, you know, it's null and void. It's not. It would have made it internally easier for me to understand what was happening at the grief level, what I needed to process, how I needed to look at it. And especially with complex trauma, okay, Grief can trigger all manner of things for us, all right, that we're unconscious of. So if we have abandonment trauma, when somebody who's a significant person in our life is no longer here, it can trigger that I'm not safe. So we can literally spend all of those years on, for me, a hypo arousal and not even know it because we didn't have the language, we didn't have the understanding we didn't have the ability to process or identify what was happening for us internally. And so if without that information, everything rumbles around on the inside and we can't put our finger on what it is that we need to know or what it is we need to address. And there's no blame. It just is what it is. But now that we have the language and the deeper understanding, we are able to begin to put our finger on what's happening for me internally. How do I need to go about this in order that I can feel comfortable to process my grief, in order that I have that deeper internal understanding of how to process my grief? And it is very, very deep emotional work. And when grief comes, it hits us from so many sides. So it can literally impact every aspect of our life and feel overwhelming and that we can't find what's our one next step. Um, it can be difficult to feel joy from activities that normally we would feel joy from, all right? Uh, it can interrupt our sleep pattern and when our sleep pattern gets interrupted then everything gets thrown out of whack and especially with complex trauma because if we don't have enough sleep it has the capacity to trigger us into hyperarousal or hypoarousal and unless we've built that internal awareness deeply within us that that's what's happening we can actually go into a state of um, anxiety and or depression that can last for days or weeks at a time and we don't we're not aware of what's driving that okay so we're not aware of the unconscious triggers good morning Kathy Merry Christmas um, so and simple tasks can be hard to remember as well and that lines up with all the neurology neurobiology that we teach or that I teach in class 
is that memory is off track. And I've actually just been doing a lot of research around shame and trauma. And when we have shame, it actually processes our memories differently. So grief can trigger all of this and we have trouble remembering what's our one next thing to do, even down to simple things like remembering to eat, to do our dishes, to do our washing, to shower. Think about all the things that you're aware of in your day-to-day -day life that can be impacted under complex trauma conditions. Add grief into it and you can see how grief can begin to compound what's happening internally for us. Uh, it can impact, our, <laughs> for some of us, our minimal ability to socialise and for others it will just impact your ability to want to socialise, okay? So, you know, be aware of when the grief is impacting you so deeply that it's, that it's like, I can't go out, all right? Because not going out or not connecting with other people is not healthy for us in our whole entire system. So we're wired for connection. So to choose to disconnect for extended periods of time will not be good for us either. Uh, it can also impact our spirituality. It will bring up deeper questions for us to examine in the spiritual areas of our life, whether we like it or not. Uh, especially for me around my mum, it was like, oh my goodness, we just we had just begun to arrive at a time and place where we could have open conversations maybe. <laughs> well, I don't know about open, but uh, she would actually listen to what I was saying instead of just wanting to talk all the time. And so for me, it's like we build up that, uh, oh, wow, you know, we're going to finally have a connection and it's gone, all right? So it's it did bring up a lot of questions for me around spirituality and not only that, where did spirituality fit into my life now that I was experiencing this profound grief, okay? Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Diana. And so we also need to be aware of when we won't let ourselves cry, when it's hard to cry. I know I took a week off work after everything that I had to do with my mum's passing and I went, I'm going to stay at home for a week, I'm going to cry my eyes out and then I'll be okay to go back to work and I didn't cry once. <laughs> I went back to work and you know the first hurdle and I was running off downstairs outside just to cry because I'm like oh my goodness you know I'm going through enough of a challenging time without having a co-worker be cranky not at me but you know that's how it was relayed and I was like oh you know enough so we've got to be willing to give ourselves permission that when we need to cry we're allowed to communicate that as well and, you know, we're not the abandoned child anymore as an adult. So build that awareness in when you're telling yourself, I'm not allowed to cry, all right? And then build a deeper awareness into, I give myself permission to cry. I am safe to cry. I am safe to grieve and I can manage my grief as well. And that's why we do this information too is so that we can retrain our brain and create new neural pathways that we're safe and we can manage this process as an adult. Um, one of the best things we can do is be aware of what we need to communicate. Now, around grief, it can be hard and very. it's a very vulnerable space where we go, oh, I don't know if I can communicate how I'm feeling and what I need because we've never done this before or we're still going through the process and we're not sure what the response will be from other people and then we have to consciously choose, okay, I'm not sure but I know that I don't have control over other people but I do need to communicate what I need today. And today I may need to just sit down and can you just sit with me while I bore my eyes out? Uh, hand me the Kleenex box. 
<laughs> and I tell you, I should have taken out shares in Kleenex years ago. I'd be rich by now. I, and I am kidding. Okay, that's my dry sense of humour. But, you know, how much better would it have been for me to not soldier on and keep, you know, not, not a stiff upper lip, but just, you know, we can do this. Let's get everyone else organised and then I'll worry about myself. If we turn that around and say, okay, this is what I'm capable of in this moment. I need to sit down. Can you just sit with me? Hand me the tissue box. And then once I have a good ball that, you know, my mum's not here, it's Christmas. You know, we had a whole bunch of family traditions. Then it enables us to either go and have a nap for half an hour or we can get up and go, right, now I can do all the things that I need to do to prepare for today. All right. So it's being willing to be open and honest and vulnerable that this is what you need and sometimes it's the hardest thing to speak up about what we need. Uh, with your decorations, we want to be able to say, well, these are traditions that we had around decorations, let's make a new one this year. And I like doing things like... Uh, <laughs> When we used to do the whole tree in the kids' row, I used to have their names on those baubles. And so I used to do things like have one for my mum. And even though it was a private thing, it was there for me to know, okay? And you may want to include your kids in that whole, you know, we're grieving. My kids didn't know my mum. Uh, she passed away when Joshua was, oh, I think three let's say three, just over three, so none of my kids got to know her. So the things that I did were private, but then I look back and I think, you know what, I needed to include her in their lives even though she was gone, and I didn't understand that at the time. It wasn't until Chloe got to high school and she is total opposite build to me and she's very tiny, so... Everything that I am, she's the, she's the opposite. So she's tiny, she needs to find smaller clothes, etc., etc. And she was giving, getting given a hard time for being slim and called anorexic and everything. And she's exactly like my mum. Exactly. So she can never put weight on. She'll never, ever look like me um, externally. So she could never put weight on. And, you know, that in itself is a challenge. And so I had to explain her and get out photos of my mum and say, this is who you take after. I take after my dad and, you know, I'm never going to, we're never going to physically look the same. But this was my mum and she could never put on weight either. So I've only learnt recently that my kids needed me to talk about all of these things. And I had no <laughs> I had no idea, okay, because I've come from generations of family where you don't talk about any of this stuff. You don't talk about your emotions. You don't talk about uh, the family because if you do and you do something different, then the, the nonverbal message is you don't belong. So we want to just be able to say, okay, what are my holiday decorations and what are the traditions? How can I incorporate them into bringing my loved one into my space? And even if we don't have kids, how can I incorporate the love that I feel for them and into day-to-day -day life? Now, I want to suggest you do this because when I went to Indonesia with Chloe when she got married, I had the most incredible experience. Now, the kid's dad and I were divorced, but, you know, when we got married, I loved him. I wanted our life together, and that's a whole other chat show. But they have the most incredible way of respecting uh, those that are deceased. And so Ricky's mum was deceased, and Stuart, their dad, my kid's dad, was deceased. And all throughout the service and everything, it was very, very respectful of the role they played as parents. So when I sat down after that and they, Ricky's family didn't know me, so they asked me about my life and um, Chloe's dad came up, etc. And in my heart, that whole love that I had for him, even though we went through really rough times, was still there and I had tears coming down my face. So I want you to know that 
even if we go through hard times with those that we lose, then we're going to go, right, at some point in time, that love is still there for them. It doesn't go away. So we want to honour and respect that, you know, and create new traditions that work for us now that they're not here. And let people around you know, especially family members, know what you're doing. Um, you don't have to let them know straight away, but let them know what it means for you and include them in the process, okay? Uh, if you want to attend any parties or not, let people know. And sometimes you may not know until just before you go, and that's okay. You have my full permission to say, look, I'm sorry, I can't come. I'm just not up for it. But in giving you permission, I also want to encourage you to at least go, take your own car, and even if you have to sit there and read a book, at least be around other people or play a game on your phone or, oh, look, when we take our phone, we take our computers with us, so do anything on your phone. And maybe you just sit there eating chocolate and drinking your favourite beverage and you just know that people are around you but you don't have to connect unless you want to. So think about, get creative with the different ways that you can do things. And the first year, I've got to tell you, the first year is always the worst year. So if any of these tips can help you, then please use them. Um, and, you know, if the loved one is someone that you normally put on a card, come up with a creative way that you include them in, in the Christmas cards that you send out. Uh, and gift giving, oh my goodness, that was really challenging the first year too. But I want you to think about um, how you can show your love for someone. Now, I've got a friend who lost her husband of many, many years. And so she does things like goes and sits at his grave and takes the grandchildren and all sorts of things to honour him. And that in itself is a gift, okay? So think about how you want to make a tradition that you carry on as well, all right? And when it comes to food preparation, I have a really healthy suggestion, don't, okay? I found this place. Now, now remember, we're in uh, Australia where it's hot at Christmas. So we don't do, generally speaking, we don't do big roast dinners and whole shooting match because... It's just too damn hot. So we tend to do things like barbecues or, you know, we have Webers outside where you can do the roast and, you know, we don't want the kitchen steaming up because it's just too damn hot. So what we do is we got what I learned to do was instead of spending hours in the kitchen, I would go to this place that pre-makes these beautiful salads and I would just get a range of different salads to take with me and, let's face it, we go to the cheesecake shop for dessert. Okay, so let me know your favourite dessert place. <laughs> and you can do all, a whole bunch of creative things that mean that you just have the food already prepared. Okay, take the stress and the strain off you from the traditional to we want to make this as easy as possible. All right. It's not about the effort that you put into the food, spending hours there. It matters more that we spend time connecting, okay? So I don't know how it goes overseas. Uh, one of the things that I would do instead of cooking a roast chook, I'd go down to Woolworths the morning of the day before Christmas and buy a couple of roast chooks, all right? Done. Um, get there early though, all right? Get there early so you don't miss out on the roast chooks because they're always gone. <laughs> Line up if you have to. But, you know, even these days, Woolworths do things like roast lamb, roast beef, and you can go and pick up a bit. Okay, it might not be for a massive family, but even cook it the night before if that's your thing. And if you have tips for people about 
if you're overseas from Australia and you have tips for people about where to get, you know, all the pre-prepared Christmas stuff, feel free to leave them down below because everybody will be thankful that you did. Um, all right, so we've covered the holiday food preparation and create some healthy habits so you need to take care of yourself. And remember, if you're a parent, when you're taking care of yourself, you're also teaching your kids. So you're verbalising why you're taking care of yourself, why I need to have a rest, um, just all the emotional stuff, all right? Really take good care of yourself and remember the acronym Hungry, Angry, Lonely and Tired and sit down and speak to someone. Now, if you're at a family gathering and it all gets overwhelming, before you go, I want you to look up an online mental health chat app. There's apps, but there's also sites that have chat lines that you can connect to. So if you need to talk to someone, then you can go and connect with somebody in the middle of family lunch and just, you know, grab your lunch, grab your drink, go and sit down and say, I just need to sit here and breathe for a minute and connect to someone on a mental health chat line so that you have that connection with somebody who understands that you're going through a really tough time in the middle of the family gathering. Another thing that you can do is there's an app called Youpa. That's Y-O-U-P-E-R. Y-O-U-P-E-R. Youpa. And it's artificial intelligence and it can it's just brilliant. And it can help you process what's happening for you at the moment. Okay. Journal. I've spent my life journaling and it's one of the best ways to process what's happening for me so that I can dump it all out, either get sleep or I know what my one next step is because I've cleared my mind and my heart of everything that night. But it also gives me something, questions to reflect on so that I know what I can look at, what's my one next thing I need to do so that I'm not in this intense pain, all right? And give yourself permission to be sad. Give yourself permission to be sad. Now, if your family rules are that you're not allowed to show emotions, then you're going to need to give yourself permission to be sad, all right? It's important that we give ourselves permission to feel these emotions, especially if we've been wired not to express emotions and be gentle. If there's one thing you want to do with yourself, for yourself, is be gentle. Now, if you want all of those tips uh, with an expanded version, hang on, oh, whoops, I've just pulled up the wrong one for you. Sorry about that, girls. I've put them all in a three-page PDF so that you can look at them you can decide where you're at each day and what's happening for you. What's the one next thing you need to do? And they're all in the academy and the link is just about to come up. And here's a quick reminder that we're having our, our annual Christmas party in group. And if you want to join in, you're more than welcome. Jump into group. We're going to have a pyjama party, okay? <laughs> and we're going to have games and prizes and we're just going to enjoy ourselves and celebrate that we've all done a year together so remember jump in get your time frame if you can't convert the time frame then make sure that you ask for help because I will or other admins will help you convert the time frame thanks for joining in and I will get back to your responses ASAP thanks Laura and uh, thanks for joining in today I'll talk to you soon bye for now